I'm going to touch the pad. What in the world? Fused. Morning crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now as you can see, we're sort of in the new workshop aren't we? And this is sort of the first half, there's another whole half over there and that wall that you can see along there is going to be coming out in the next few weeks. And we get an open plan garage, perfect. Okay, well as you probably guessed I'm in the process of setting up the new workshop and Ben has the main air compressor still back in Auckland because we've got some uh, underbody sealant uh, jobs to uh, to do on the old ROVs and a heap of utes by the sounds of it for Toyota New Zealand so that's going to keep Ben pretty damn busy for the next few weeks so I don't have an air compressor so I went in the in the shed down here and uh, I was rummaging around for an old air compressor that we brought with us from England and it's made by a company called Sealy Power Products and I used to buy lots of different pieces of equipment from Sealy wasn't the best quality uh, but was good value for money and did last a very long time. But it, you know, it wasn't premium gear. It wasn't certainly you know, commercial um, equipment for use every single day. It was sort of your hobby kind of stuff. They did do stuff for garages, but it wasn't that great. So I pulled it out of the shed, plugged it in, and nothing happened. And I thought, ooh, that's not good because I needed an air compressor down here to operate the, uh, the motorcycle hoist to go up and down because it's an air operated hoist and at the moment it's not really a hoist is it, it's just a park. Um, so I thought we should take a look at this air compressor and see if we can work out why it's not firing up. Um, I can hear a bit of a humming noise but that's about it. Okay, here we go. Okay, so just so you can hear the noise that I was hearing when I first plugged it in, got some power supply Hopefully the camera will pick it up. Right, plugged in, and then you lift the little red button. Ooh, can you hear that? Hmm, I'll get you a bit closer. Okay, I'm gonna keep really quiet. Okay, well, a quick overview of the old air compressor. Uh, I'm not sure if you can pick up the humming or not. But the first job, get that cover taken off. Right, let's be safe. <laughs> Unplug it. Now, there will be a capacitor in here which helps to start the motor. So be very careful because there could still be a charge in that capacitor. I'm not a 240 volt, you know, AC electrician, to be honest. I've done a bit, wired up these lights. And you'll notice on the, on the videos, all the lights are are wired up with a plug now like um, like this one here they've got a plug they're not hardwired into the garage and the reason for that you may say Andy what's going on well it allows me to bypass the New Zealand regulations for being an electrician and uh, secondly which is more important for me actually is the fact that if one of these lights stops working I can unplug it and swap it out really quick without having to undo any wires any wiring Pretty cool, isn't it? Okay, so that's unplugged. Let's have a little look inside. I have pulled a couple of these air compressors apart in the past uh, with varying degrees of success and repair. Usually it's pipes and leaks and that kind of stuff, it's pretty easy. Um, when it comes to electrics, not great on these things. Great to be in a new workshop, I tell you. And I'm going to be away all next week, so making the most of the time that I've got. Okay, six bolts, job done. There we go. Don't need that. Okay, so what have we got? Well, we've got the pump element 
and it's got an integral motor to the pump this is a very common design on uh, sort of Chinese built and, and basically just cheap air compressors do it all as one there's no belt drive like you see on the bigger air compressors so the first thing that could be wrong with it is the motor or the pump could be seized so without touching any wires just gonna move the fan feels pretty free actually okay well let's turn it back on again and see if we can hear that buzzing noise a bit louder there we go there we go all right give it a flick now nah. so there's definitely power getting to the motor by the sounds of it but there's actually nothing happening so we need to work out what's going on don't we well I should really get my multimeter. Right, geez, I might be getting a shock doing this. Okay, so we've got the capacitor, which basically helps to start the motor initially, because there's a hell of a, uh, a current draw required to get this motor to initially start to turn. That's the hardest part about air compressors. Remember, I used to have a double, a twin head one back in the UK, and it, it was staged so that one air compressor, one pump would start first, and then the other one to try and keep the maximum current draw down. So we've got the old capacitor. We know that the capacitor hasn't failed because when I spin it by hand, it would start up and it doesn't. So I reckon the capacitor's okay and there's no indication of swelling or anything like that around the outside or discoloration. So I believe that I'll learn. Okay, so we've got our multimeter. I've put it on uh, volts AC and we'll hang that on there. Look, hopefully it'll sit on there so you can see what's going on. You see the screen? You can, look at that, right. So. I haven't got any fly leads, but we'll, we're going to turn this on. So we've now got power. It's humming. There's definitely a current flow. And without blowing myself up, hopefully, we're going to just pop the red one. Not that it makes any difference on AC, but on there. On there. There you are. 254 volts AC. So there's definitely current getting to the capacitor. Okay, well, I'm going to turn that off. And then just to prove that the capacitor should really be, be, you know, withholding or storing the energy, we'll do exactly the same test again, and we'll see if it's got a voltage. Oh, not a lot. Look at that. Dropping very, very quickly. So maybe the capacitor has failed. Yeah, that's not so good. Yeah, I'd expect the capacitor to keep the current, wouldn't you? Keep the voltage. Jeez. Let's try that again. Okay, we've got current. I'm going to see if I can turn this thing off. And you can see it drop right from the top. Way easy, Tiger. Holy shit, that's all over the place. What's going on there? Strange, very strange. Right, so power on. 255 volts. Turn it off. All over the place. Maybe we're on auto. Maybe we need to kill the auto range. Hang on. There we go. Let's just try that again. So without the power on, what have we got? Nothing. Power on. 254. Power off. And essentially, immediately, nothing. Damn. Okay, so we've got a lot more to it than just the capacitor. We've got a motor. So is the, the motor has to have um, an electromagnet on the, um, on the armature. And, of course, we can see these windings around the outside here. So there's got to be current flow and continuity. We can test for all that around the motor. So, let's find some wires. Okay, just a quick, quick overview then. We've got the power coming in on the cord. And that comes in to the little black box. The little black box controls you know, when the air compressor should fire up at what pressure. Uh, it's basically just a big switch. And that would then connect the cord coming in to the cord going out to the motor now we've got three things 
going on at the end here. We've got the capacitor uh, wired in, um, in parallel. We'll have the, uh, the field windings and we've got the armature windings as well. So we, we're going to need to isolate each one of those three components in order to be able to test them for continuity. My guess is one of them has gone up in circuit. We all already know that the capacitor is not doing a particularly good job and that may well have caused something to burn out inside the compressor because it's been really hard to start because it's not, not had the additional oomph from that capacitor. So things are not looking good unfortunately, but primary fail, by the looks of it, the capacitor. Right, so let's get this fan taken off and let's get the end casing taken off from the actual motor body as well, which is these big bolts here. Mm, I have a hunch this might not be going back together again. Right, first job, I want to get rid of this capacitor because I'm not happy having that kicking around because, you know, we've, we've proved there's no voltage in it, but, jeez, you never quite know. It's a pretty big capacitor, get a fair big whack off that, wouldn't you, if it was working properly. And it's disconnected from the mains at the moment, obviously. Right, let's put that over there. Get those little screws out without getting a shock. <laughs> I have had a few shocks in the past and I've been alright. Just. There we go. Right, now let's see how that capacitor's mounted. Well, that's pretty easy. Just a, It's on like a stud, so there's just a, a nut at this end, so we can just undo that. And looks like this one can actually take two capacitors. And we'll gingerly put this, that's Eric's favourite word, we'll gingerly place this somewhere out of the way. Now there we go, look. Pretty cool. And it's got some, some writing on it, so you may as well get to find out there, look. It's a CBB60. There you go, look. 20, da, 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 da. 450 volt AC, what the hell? That's a three-phase one. Uh, I suppose they knew what they were doing. Where's it made? Wung City. Capacitor Factory. That's pretty cool. Well, I don't think it works anymore. <laughs> okay, stick it to one side. Right, what's next? Yes, the fan. Okay, well, hopefully we've got the right size circuit players. Oh, so easy. Okay. The question is, how easy is that fan going to be to get off? I think we need to get a big pry bar behind it. Big flat screwdriver. Try this one first. Might be big enough there. Well, maybe. It did move a little bit. Oh, yeah. Come on, you can do it. Right, bigger pry bar needed. Motorcycle tire lever, that might work. Wait, you don't do that. Is that working? Oh, look at that, it is working. Come on, you can go off there now. It's a good fit, Mr. Chinaman. Oh, nearly there. Good stuff. I didn't break it. Perfect. Okay, right, we've got some Cable ties to snip. I always get really, really anxious working on this kind of stuff because it's just not, I have no training. Oh, Mr. Young, he cut the wire. Bollocks. Okay. Something that can't be fixed if we need to fix it. There we go. 
Okay. Right, so now, just the earth, isn't it? Now, which doesn't really matter too much, does it? I think we'll get away with that. Right, so now we need to undo these four bolts that hold that end casing on, that bearing support. Yeah, easy. Right, can we get the Makita in there? Oh, we can. There's one. There's two. Oh, not all the way out yet. There we go. If nothing else, it's just fun to take stuff apart, isn't it? But it'd be cool if we can get it fixed, or at least find out why it failed. Because I know there's nothing wrong with the pump, it pumps just fine. That has a worn out. Get off, get off. There we go. When there's a wheel, there's a way. Okay, last bolt, that's all four. Okay. So we really want to get this end piece off. We're trying to keep all the wiring in situ, so gentle tap. Let's see what happens. Now what we don't want it to do is for the casing, the field to separate from here, ideally. I just want to get this end piece off for now. I think it's doing a bit of both. It's moving. with some wires to to deal with so we need to undo that earth strap aren't we damn i missed that okay star screwdriver This wire here, which is sort of threaded through that. Okay. Oh, there's a little, little washer on there. We can get rid of that for now. Come back. I think it's pretty cool as a mechanic to take yourself out of your own sort of comfort zone and do stuff that you're not really that sure about, just to investigate. Because yeah, that's how I used to learn to do mechanics: is take things apart and have a little look. Okay. Well, I think we need to just sit that down there out of the way because I don't want to be moving that just yet however to test this see we've got the field windings which are these windings here and then we're gonna have oh maybe maybe it's a fixed magnet in the uh, in the armature I don't see any brushes can't be at the other end surely Okay, well in that case, let's take the cover off the box. Let's disconnect this wire out of the box. And then maybe take the field windings off the backing plate. Because we know that the, this big, uh, big steel lump is loose. So a few more taps and that should come off. And then we can have a look at the armature and see how that's constructed. Whether it is actually an electromagnet or whether it's a fixed magnet. Might be. I don't know. I just don't know. Not taking one of these apart as far as this before. Okay, right, cover off the box. Some screws somewhere, I think. Let's have a look. Now, if I remember rightly, there's usually a screw somewhere in the middle. I think that's, oh, there we are. Look, there's a little grommet under all the dust. And this thing has not been maintained in any shape, way or form. It was just bought as a second spare compressor, compressor much smaller than the, the normal size that we, uh, that we use. 
And this was actually used originally down at the off-road centre, the 4x4 centre that I used to have in England. And it was down at the cabin for people to blow up their tyres and stuff. So it was used pretty infrequently. But saying that, it's probably about 15 years old. Right. Oh, there we go. Look. Cool. Right, so there's our switch. So you can see inside, now we've got the lid off, that it, uh, it switches both the negative circuit, because this is the, where are we now? This is the power. This is the power coming in on this cable here, look. And this is essentially the power going out to the motor. And all it is is the pressure that's remaining in the tank as it drops down, it gets to a certain threshold, and of course this then switches and connects these contacts, the pump works, and then when it gets to a, a set maximum pressure, again, it turns off, it disconnects these contacts. And it's just like a big, I'll say a relay, I suppose it is a relay, really. And you've got inside four pairs of contacts. So I'll do a really good close-up so you can see what's going on in there. So you can see we've got here, look, four sets of contacts, one, two, three, four. And the negative cable, basically, the, the, the current, or the, the, the circuit has to be connected. It goes through that set of contacts, through that set of contacts, and then out. And then the same again down here. Look with the with the positive, the the uh, you know the live. It goes through this set of contacts, this set of contacts, and away. So you've got when you open and close it, it's doing this. So that is a wearing part, and it could well be if your air compressor is not working properly those contacts have got burnt because every time they close they're going to spark a little bit and every time they open they're going to spark a bit and eventually just like ignition points they're going to get burnt and not work properly yeah. interesting isn't it coolio okay well we need to uh, disconnect these wires down this side and the earth just goes onto the frame of the switch right here we go one don't lose these little screws hey come back and the earth is just screwed onto the side of the casing there look excellent down little washer I'll find that one later on okay so we can pull all of these out now and essentially, I don't think we need to actually, or do we? Yeah, we do really, don't we? Let's pull that through there and get it out of the actual switch block because I want to thread that casting through and get rid of that. Okay. There we go. Coolier. Right. That's those out of the way. Oops, sorry, camera. Now we can just thread all this back through and get rid of that end casting. He says, hopefully. It's on a Sunday morning. Sunday mornings are good for this kind of stuff. There we go. And now we can finally get this out of the way because it's been a bit of a pain having this hanging around. There we go. Put that somewhere safe. Okay. So what we've got coming in here now, we've got the ground, which is essentially coming out there. Look, I'm going onto the casing of the motor. And then we've got these two wires. The, uh, the live, the brown, and of course the neutral, which is the blue. And these two wires, by the looks of it, just go into the field windings. So there should be continuity between those two wires. We can test that with the multimeter very simply. Okay, let's stick it on continuity. And we want the one that goes beep. 
just a quick test yep we're good there okay so one on one side and one on the other oh there you go we're open circuit what the hell so the field winding has burnt out god damn okay well that might be the end right so let's get this field winding taken off and do a visual inspection see if we can see maybe find the brake who knows where's my hammer So we can see here, look, that the actual armature it must be a fixed magnet. It has to be. Where's my screwdriver? Absolutely has to be. Why is nothing? Hey, something's been whacking on it. Look at this. These are all bent. That one there, especially. And at the far end as well. Geez, you got to see this. Well, I'm not sure how well the camera is going to pick up on this or focus on what I need to focus on, but we'll give it a go. So as I turn the armature around, you can see there are these little aluminium protruding pieces. I take it they must just be fans, just to draw the air, maybe. Or, I don't know, maybe. But look, as I turn it around, you might spot that some of these are damaged and bent. Here's one coming around now, look. See, that's, that's all bent, as if it's hit something really hard. And there's like a, a scrape on the outer edge around there look where it's been rubbing against something so maybe it's been making contact with the windings and damage the windings the bearing feels really good though and so does the end bearing but maybe a foreign body got inside the air compressor and you'll see that on the other end as well so there you go look that one's bent that one's bent the other way a little bit that's pretty straight, pretty straight, pretty straight, pretty straight, damaged again. Yeah, definitely been something going on inside that uh, that motor. Not good. Right, let's take a sneaky peek at the field windings. Actually pretty heavy. Okay, so if that fan had crashed into or made contact with the field windings, we would see damage somewhere around this area here. It doesn't look too bad, does it? First inspection. Where has it failed? Now this is the, the end with the fan. That's just a bit of binding string that's failed. Jeez, why is it? Oh, there you are. Look at that. Woohoo! I found it. Oh my word. There we go. It's got broken wire, which should be connected to that one there. Look. Are there any other broken wires? Don't know. Definitely found one there. Just get rid of that bit of string without cutting any more wires. But I'd never make a brain surgeon, would I? There we go. So we'll get Mr. Stringy out of the way. Now the question is, is it just that one wire? I mean, it's obviously going to have damaged the insulation. Here, you can see all the burn marks 
around as well. So that's uh, that's going to reduce the power because it's going to be you know essentially losing windings uh, and you know jumping from one part of the circuit to the next. But it's not going to be fixable. Well, hey, we found the problem. At least I know this this really is now junk. God, it did 15 years. Can't grumble, can we? Well, there you go. We've pulled it apart as far as we need to go. Primary fail. What was the primary fail? Well, it's my guess. This capacitor failed, which then made it much harder for this uh, air compressor to get started. And that additional loading caused the windings, the field windings, to burn out. And we saw, where was it? We saw just on here, look where the winding had burnt through. What a shame. Now, I suppose somebody out there will be able to fix this and you know repair that bit of winding. Um, over here in New Zealand, you can pick up these little tiny air compressors secondhand for around 50 New Zealand dollars, which is just nothing. This one in England, I think cost us about 150 pounds. Brand new, it did 15 years. So it has two faults. It would need a new capacitor and a repair or, you know, a rewind on the field winding. And um, it's just not worth doing. These things are a disposable unit. So I'm not going to throw it away. I will keep certain parts because I'm going to be buying another one of these as a reserve. And they're all pretty much built the same way. Yeah, be crazy not to. Uh, yeah, certainly this component here. These do wear out, and I think this one's still working fine, so pretty good. Okay, crew, well, if you enjoyed the video and found it interesting, why not click on the subscribe button somewhere up there, look, you'll see a little gear icon turn up, click on the gear icon, and then you can tick the box and turn on notifications. And then our friends down at YouTube, well, they'll send you an email as and when I upload any new videos. You'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google+, and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. However, if you don't mind, first point of contact by the comments down on YouTube at the bottom of the video. That'd be great. And I'll do my very best to get back to you. I can't guarantee I'm going to reply to every single comment. I'm a very busy chap at the moment, and I'm away again all next week. But I will do my best. Okay, well, there's also a Patreon page to, uh, to help support the Ender Mechanic YouTube channel. You can drop onto there. You can read all about the history of the channel, how it came to be. Uh, up and coming projects and the big workshop move is one of those and there's some new posts going on there shortly and uh, of course you can see all the profiles of the Andy Mechanic Tool Girls and there are photos and short videos uh, and also there's uh, a series of tiers so if you're a patron uh, to the channel and you, you make a donation then that will access uh, whatever level of tier you've chosen to get up to and you'll be able to download um, short videos and lots more photos uh, tool girl Lily did a photo shoot not too long ago, and I'm hoping to get those put on there very soon. Okay, crew, if you do decide to become a patron, please only send through what you can afford. That's very important. Uh, I really don't want anybody out there struggling just because they've, they've made a pledge that they shouldn't really have done. All right, well, there's your compressor video. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be more to come. All right, crew, cheers. Over and out. You get the video. Oh,